have three kids who are very close in age, and this means I feel like I've hit the homeschool mom jackpot. I mean, don't get me wrong, our homeschool days are not without challenges, but my kids have been fairly simple to teach as a group. I know that there are moms out there with far more children or larger age spans who struggle to juggle their many kids during their homeschool day. So welcome to our three-part series on how you might get that done. Hi everyone, I'm Pam Barnhill and I have helped thousands of homeschoolers create doable systems, beat burnout, and bring more joy to their homeschool day. Welcome to episode 62 of the 10 Minutes to a Better Homeschool podcast. Okay, this first segment in our series is going to be all about my best tips for juggling multiple kids. And then over the next two weeks, I'm going to be joined by two different guests. Both of them have five or more children. One mom is going to be talking about how she found freedom in using a very strict schedule called a timetable. I know, I know, but she insists that this is the case. And then the other mom, who is a mom of 10, is going to share how she combines some of her kids and uses a special kind of loop schedule to manage to teach everyone. Her approach to looping is truly novel. So you have those two episodes to look forward to. For today, however, we're going to start with a few tips on just general tips on how to manage if you're juggling multiple kids in your homeschool. Now, before we get started with that, I would like to invite you over to download our free homeschool planning pages. We are just now at the very beginning of planning season in the homeschool world, and we have some great resources for you to help you plan out a homeschool year that is going to bring you peace and relaxation as much as you can while you're homeschooling kids all year long. And to kind of get introduced to our planning methods, you can come download our free homeschool planning pages at freehomeschoolplanner.com. Now, when you get there, we're going to give you about a dozen homeschool planning pages. And these are the big picture planning pages that I use each and every year to map out my homeschool year. I've used them every year for about the past nine or 10 years now, and I really could not imagine homeschooling without them. Those are at freehomeschoolplanner.com. And now on with the podcast. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is when you have a bunch of kids in your homeschool, when you're juggling more than one kid, even two, but certainly more than two, you've really got to combine your kids. I can't stress enough that combining your kids for content area subjects is a must. Now, content area subjects are subjects like history, science, and literature that do not rely on a specific set of skills taught in a particular order. So math and reading, those are skill area subjects. They do rely on a particular set of skills taught in a certain order. But for content subjects, you can combine kids and you can teach to your older kids. Now, when I tell people to do this, they say to me, oh, Pam, if I teach to my older kid, what about my poor younger kid? They're missing so much. They're not understanding. They're not getting it at their level. Don't worry if your younger child understands everything you're teaching about, say, the Middle Ages or biology. They're going to get it again before they graduate. So right now, you're just introducing them to the subject. So you can read aloud a good book on ancient history to everyone. And then you could have your older kids do some additional reading and activities on their own. I actually have a workshop called Teaching with Book Lists that can show you very practically how to make this happen. Now, while your older kids go off and do a little bit extra, your younger kids, all they really need to do is listen to this reading aloud that you're doing and do a little bit of narrating and they are done with that topic. Teaching multiple kids in this way eliminates the need for multiple textbooks or juggling different science topics and streams of history, and it really does simplify your homeschool immensely. Now, the second thing is to have a plan. So the other key for juggling multiple kids is to be sure to have at least a simple plan in place. The more children you have, the harder it is to fly by the seat of your pants every day without completely stressing out or being overwhelmed by decision fatigue. Now, the key to good homeschool planning is simply to be prepared 
to have a good school day when the opportunity arises. Because look, we know a lot of things come up and your days can quickly get derailed. But on the days that, hey, everything's going well, you're going to derail it by not having a plan in place. So have a plan in place. So when the opportunity presents itself to have a school, a good school day, you're ready. So what we suggest doing is is making a list of activities you want to do, but don't date them. And then you simply strive for consistency in doing school regularly. This removes the pressure of being behind. This is why people don't like homeschool planning, because life comes along and gets them behind and off the rails with their plan. Well, if you don't put dates on it to begin with, and you simply do the next thing, then you're never behind. And it eliminates the decision fatigue of not knowing what to do next. We teach a whole system of planning this way in our Put Your Homeschool Year on on Autopilot course. And we really do think it is the best way to plan. But have some kind of simple plan. And then as much as possible, use curriculum that is open and go for moms. And then as the kids get older, you can even seek out some really good video-based curriculum. So I've listed some of my favorite ones in the blog post for this particular podcast. And these curricula are not completely hands-off for mom, but instead they're open and go. And so you have very little prep that you need to do. These are what I call sticky note curriculum because your lesson plan consists like of putting a sticky note in the book when you finish for the day. And then when you open up the next day to do the next lesson, your sticky note is right where you need to go next. But everything else you need is kind of in the teacher's guide. You're not doing a lot of other prep to get ready to do these particular curriculum. And honestly, these might be a little more pricey, but to me, it's worth it because I'm paying for the convenience of open and go. And every single one of the ones that I recommend to you in the blog post are curriculum that I have used for at least two years, every single one. Some of them I've used for six or seven or more years in my homeschool. So these are really the tried and true, easy to use curriculum because I am all about ease of use. Okay, so we have covered combining your kids, having a plan. Next, I'm going to tell you to make a list. Actually, you're going to make a list for each child. Every child needs to know exactly what they're supposed to do. And when you have multiple children and they are all coming at you all day long asking, what do I do next? What what am I supposed to do now? What, what should I be doing this time? This is like a sure path to exhaustion for you. And so what you're going to want to do is use something like a spiral notebook list to communicate to each child exactly what is expected of them each day. Now, spiral notebooks are something that I learned about from my good friend, Sarah McKenzie. So if you head on over to the blog post for this episode, I'm going to link you to her post where she teaches you how to create a spiral notebook list and why you would want to do it. These lists would take me about 30 seconds to one minute to make. And let me just give you my little cheat for doing these. I have a master list. For each child, I have a master list of possible things that might go on their spiral notebook list. And so I just look down it and copy over the things that I think they should do the next day. So the master list totally eliminates even more decision fatigue. And so I create these lists for my kids each and every day. They take me less than a minute for each child. And my kids love them because they know exactly what they need to complete before they can call themselves done for the day. And then my final tip is all about the beauty of busy work. Yes, you heard me correctly. Busy work can be beautiful. Busy work kind of has a bad reputation in homeschool circles, but I contend that sometimes it can be a really useful tool for moms who are managing multiple kids. As I talked about in our episode on uh, transitions in your homeschool day, and that was episode 60, so you want to look for TMBH 60. As I talked about over there, Sometimes it's better to find a child some school to do near you than it is to let them go off 
and while they wait for you to get done with another child, and then you've got to try to get them to come back and finish. And so I would do this by padding my kids list when they were little with some busy work. And so it would be things like games on the computer, some uh, fun games that they would enjoy playing, but that were also kind of helpful. Things like learning where certain states go on the map or listening to some really good audio books, maybe some copy work or some handwriting practice. Explode the Code was a particular favorite and even some computer typing practice. So I would pad my kids' lists with some of these things so they would have something to do while they were waiting for me to finish up with another child. And then I just have to tell you, like my big secret, I always would start with my youngest child first, get him completely finished with his school, and then send him off to play for the rest of the day. And that way, he was not causing a big distraction or having to wait around for his turn, which never went well. And then I always worked the way, worked my way up the list of kids um, until I got to the oldest. So those are just some of the things you could do, some of the tips for juggling multiple kids when you're trying to teach more than one in your homeschool. I hope that you found some of those helpful. Do come and check out the blog post for this particular episode. That's going to be at pambarnhill.com slash TMBH62 because I've put a lot of links in there for you to the spiral notebook post, the curriculum that we used, and even some of our favorite quote unquote busy work things for you. So do come and check that out. Now, I will be back next week with part two of this series on juggling multiple kids, and I do hope that you join me then. Until then, keep on homeschooling.